Hello everybody, it's Yasmin Boland here with another daily message. How are you all going? So today I wanted to talk about um, something I've been looking at, which is the astrology for June. And uh, I wanted to talk about the astrology for June and how it relates to the virus. Uh, hello everybody who's hopping on now on Facebook and Instagram. Good evening, Deb. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Lara Ann. How's Malta? Hope you're really well over there. Really hope we're going to make it over there this summer. So, yeah. So, June. Okay. A few months ago, I was writing my monthly uh, Soul and Spirit magazine column. So, if you're in the UK, you probably know the amazing Soul and Spirit magazine, and uh, and I was writing the, this month for June. I write a column in there about the moon. The, it's a moonology column, basically, every month in Soul and Spirit. And so I was doing June. Obviously, it's a monthly magazine, so we have long lead times. And I was thinking, you know what? Like I would have been writing it in March or April, and I thought, you know what? I think we might get out in June because we, were all, we would have already been in lockdown when I was writing it. And I saw three major indicators that I thought, oh, that really looks like we're gonna get out in June. And those indicators are in no particular order. So the first one is that June is going to bring a Mercury retrograde. And at the time when we first started to go into lockdown, when we first started to really worry about the virus. I can't remember the actual date, I'd have to check it, but it was basically Mercury was retrograde. And the only reason I remember this is without having kind of consulted my charts again, is because I remember thinking, oh, okay, well, if Mercury's retrograde just as this whole virus thing is coming up, uh, you know, there's kind of two options. Either it could finish in the next Mercury retrograde because often what starts in one Mercury retrograde will finish in a subsequent Mercury retrograde, not necessarily the next one. You know, a project you start under one Mercury retrograde can finish under a future one. Just to give a kind of a random example, I once, uh, the first time when I, when I spontaneously moved to Paris uh, in about, I don't know, what was it, 2003 or something, um, and I rented my flat out in Sydney over the internet, someone I'd never met, a friend of a friend, and she moved in there when Mercury was retrograde. And I was like, oh God, she's moved in there when Mercury retrograde, when Mercury's retrograde. I wonder what that's gonna mean. And by the way, I bought the flat under Mercury retrograde. Um, but in the end, all it meant was that she actually moved out about two years later under Mercury retrograde. So you can see the Mercury retrograde periods kind of get tied together. So I thought, okay, well, this is all seems to be kicking off under Mercury retrograde. I'm not sure if it was, it might have been, you know, before lockdown, but it was starting to get to be a thing. Um, I went to Nashville uh, and I'm in, I'm pretty sure it was February when I went to Nashville uh, to a conference and I wore a mask. I was the only person in the airport, but I wore a mask because I went through all the air, international airports because I, I, you know, we canceled our trip to Australia in, in February. So it might have been even February. But anyway, so I thought, okay, well, Mercury retrograde in June might mean the end of it. Let's hope so. Yeah. And I was kind of like feeling quite confident about that. Plus, June brings a full moon eclipse, okay? And, you know, eclipses are always times of change. And I thought, okay, well, that's another kind of positive for, um, for the end of lockdown, you know? It's like busting out, escaping, getting away, you know, like turning the corner, especially because then when it ties into the previous Mercury retrograde. Plus, there is another Ju Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, which we had one in January. It's basically what kicked off January when, remember, January was so intense and I can't remember everything that was going on now. I know there were the fires, you know, Australia was basically on fire and the whole COVID-19 was starting. And so I thought, yeah, you know, and there's another Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. That could really also be like, you know, tying in with the beginning and being the end. But by the way, there's another one of these, the final of this series in November. So I was thinking, you know, June looks pretty darn good for getting out of here. 
and that was all great and then as we slowly started to emerge from lockdown you know in Australia they've just sent the kids back to school I mean at this point you have to go back to school whether you whether you you have to send your kids back to school whether you want to or not <clears throat> but what I'm actually now getting a bit concerned about is the very real possibility that the three factors I mentioned could just as easily indicate a second wave all right now you know me I am no fear monger I look on the bright side I believe part of my karma here on the planet as an astrology is to make people feel uplifted but partly in the interests of maintaining the integrity of astrology partly just to talk about it out loud and I wish I could see your comments but I'm a bit too far away from the camera let me see if I can move my little mini altar here and get in a bit closer all right let me see if anybody's got any comments to do with this um what is everyone saying oh Monique thank you Lulu says a second wave yeah I mean we have to be really careful if we don't want a second wave now one thing I firmly believe as an astrologer and as a human being is that we create our own reality okay so we basically as humans now have the choice of what we're going to do are we going to do a second wave or are we going to say no that's it and we're going to just maybe stay in lockdown a little bit longer you know I don't want to say it but I'm going to you know the full moon eclipse is in the sign of Sagittarius which is the fun sign it might be ah, another end to the fun another get back inside if there's a second wave we're all going to be put back inside you know and some people go oh people aren't going to go back in a second time that's why they're not going to let us out in England they're not even talking about letting us out really uh, but in Australia you know it started and in other in the parts of the states so I just wanted to say that that June really in a way could go either way with the virus it could be that if we all kind of behave for the I would say the four weeks of June I still think we've got a bit of a long way to go or maybe the first three weeks of June maybe we get let out maybe mercury retrograde plus the eclipse plus the jupiter pluto conjunction is going to add up to over you know goddess willing however it's a very real po possibility that it could actually also indicate a second wave so i guess my message is you know astrology is always about opportunities it's about um, openings it's about challenges and it's about um, it's about showing you the lay of the land and giving you choices you know so if ever you go to an astrologer who says you're doomed you're never going to get married you never have kids you never do this you never do that don't believe them okay because you are a divine creature and you're creating your own reality you are a multi-dimensional human being you know part of you is third is is in the higher realms and and actually knows that you're divine we're all divine you know but at the same time we're human so we have to be really careful now that is kind of my message of the day so I would love to know what anyone thinks anyone got any comments about this um, Janet I'm going to stay in lockdown longer even if I don't have to I mean that is probably the best thing we could all do you know even if some of the world's leaders are pushing us back out the door uh, you know I'm most concerned of all for the older people who are really vulnerable you know like I mean I'm no spring chicken but I'm not <laughs> I'm not quite in the really vulnerable age yet you know they're the ones we have to worry about and everybody if everybody says oh yes okay we can all go out again you know and everyone heads back to the shopping malls and the supermarkets and the you know festivals or whatever then we're in trouble no matter what everyone needs to keep their immune system strong says Alexa yes yes we all need to keep our immune system strong but you know they still don't know that much about the virus they still don't have a vaccine they still don't have a even a test to see if you've had it yet they don't really know what happens if you get it twice you know there's still so much unknown yeah Lulu's staying home long kids are back at school in Australia yeah they're not back here yet and according to my son they're not going to go back till September I really hope that's the case Natalie Nancy says history always shows a second wave yeah look we have to be careful we have to be careful and we have to you know 
we have to look at, at how it's going and astrologically the eclipse and Mercury retrograde and Jupiter Pluto really can go either way so we need to kind of spread the message so share this message with anyone you want okay so um, I'm going to do some cards now because we did some cards yesterday and it was really fun and I've got I've got a few minutes I usually do this for about 20 minutes um, in New Jersey schools are closed until next year says Chrissy unsure if summer camps will ha happen lots of people not observing social distancing Nikki says she's social distancing in Ad Adele says we're still not allowed to go out other than for work or essential shopping in Wales <sighs> yeah it's tough isn't it spread the message not the virus exactly exactly we had 70 people chanting this morning by the way or even 80 I'm not really sure I had my eyes closed for most of it but um yeah amazing we need to chant even louder and we really don't want a second wave we really don't want a second wave and all the people who are most vulnerable please stay home and that includes my mother <laughs> all right so what about if we take a um card for this whole question let's start with a card for this question earth soul Oh, my darling boy would like a card. Earth, soul, zen. Okay, so first of all, the card for us. And this is a card for earth, soul, zen's beautiful boy. Oh, okay. Well, that's Look, we've got a really good card for this, okay? A really good card for this. So, and I do have a message to go with this card. So, the card overall is the new moon in Taurus, which suggests that it's not going to be as diabolical for the economies as people are fearing so i hope that's correct um well there's always a deeper meaning here we go this card will often come up when you're inquiring about a financial matter or doubting your self-worth and i think one of the big things about i mean for for me it doesn't really make much difference if i'm at home or i'm if i'm in lockdown or not financially because i make most of my money by sitting at my computer writing so lockdown hasn't really affected us if anything it's been a good thing because there have been more people at home and you know i've been doing things like this this card suggests you can have what you want but you must believe in yourself it comes down to the law of attraction you can create abundance now if you're one of the people who's desperate to get back to work because of money situations let me just say this to you and i've said this to someone else who's very dear to me i won't say who i think it's really really important to be aware of this people who are worried about money and worried about their jobs I truly believe, and again, I'm not a fear monger. I'm just saying, this is my Capricorn moon speaking. You know, these are uncertain times. And, you know, to be honest, 2021 doesn't look that much easier. <laughs> so I would say, if you are worried about your job, and if you have any way to create an online business whether you just start it now as a side hustle as they call it you know do it because there is no guarantee of anything at this point you know and again i don't want to freak people out but if you've got something to offer like nearly everybody who's watching this has something to offer in fact i would say 100 percent of people who are watching this have something to offer and i said this at the start of this whole lockdown i made this impassioned plea and basically ranted saying whatever you've got to offer put it online well it's not too late get it online okay and start offering it to people you know, it doesn't matter what you're teaching. You might be teaching, I mean, you know, cake baking or you might be teaching how to make pretty roses that sit on cakes, you know, how to use icing sugar piping or teaching Reiki or guitar or mandolin or some obscure instrument that no one's ever heard of or how to use Excel spreadsheets. I always go to Excel spreadsheets. If you can, if you're worried about your job, think about what else you can offer. It's so important now. Because at the very worst, all that's going to happen is you're going to put time into creating some kind of online course or membership or something like that, where you can have your vibe, attract your tribe, you can serve people, you can help people, and you can also make sure you've got money coming in no matter what happens to the economy. 
you know I mean this my pages are filled with people who want to write books who want to do healing who want to open holistic centers okay ah Sandra saying my 20 year old son started online business during this time yes and it's doing well perfect I give him I've given my son digital marketing books to read because I want him to know nobody knows what's going to happen get online new moon in Taurus it's going to be fine as long as you future proof yourself um, okay and it also says get clear on what you most value and uh, get clear on what you most value will help you find peace so I actually think that this is quite a good sign. You know, I've been saying that this whole thing all today, I've been saying it could go over way, either way. To me, this card, sorry, this card here, is kind of a good sign that it's going to be okay. Maybe people are going to socially distance and socially space and stay responsible and maybe we're not going to suffer a second wave. And I'm going to say it, there's another chance of a second wave in November as well, so be careful. Sally says, weaving anyone. Yes, weaving, yoga, ballet, all those things. Okay, I think it's going to be okay, but we have to be smart. And please, let's think about the people who are more vulnerable than us. All right. Now, this is a card for the um, Earth Zen person who wanted a card. Oh, this card has come up so many times. There is something in the air. This is for your beautiful boy. You asked for a card. Expect powerful change. Expect powerful change. All right, so question from Catherine. My mind wanders in meditation. How do I stop that? Um, oh my God, Catherine, you know what that means? Oh, it means you're human. <laughs> it means you've got a brain. Don't worry. Everybody's mind wanders in, uh, in meditation. And what all the teachers suggest that we do is that we come back. When we notice our mind wandering, we acknowledge the thought and we come back to our breath. One thing I do quite often when I'm meditating is um, I keep a pen and paper next to me because quite often when I'm meditating, um, things will come up that like insights and revelations and inspiration. So I quickly note them down so I can stop thinking about them. Otherwise, I keep thinking, oh, I've got to remember that. I've got to remember that. So I'll write them down. Um, but yeah, just come back to your breath is the best thing you can do when you're meditating. Everybody's mind wanders. Um, for those of you who join me on chanting, like I said, we had like 70 or 80 people today, which is just so amazing. We're doing the, the Kali chant to get rid of fear and negativity and the virus and everything else, you know. But getting rid of the virus is also, it's not just chanting, it's also social distancing and not all going out and, uh, you know, kissing each other. Um, yeah, one thing I've really noticed with chanting that's kind of an interesting insight to have got during this lockdown period is that when we chant, it basically fills our mind. Like even more than when we're, um, when we're uh, doing a meditation. So when you do a meditation, often you'll do a mantra. So you can come back to your breath and come back to your mantra. But a mantra is much harder to hold on to, you know, because it's just silent in your mind. A chant is about a million times easier you know like I was saying that sometimes I write things down because I get a flash of inspiration if I get a flash of inspiration while I'm chanting I've been known to try and write them down excuse me but it's really hard for the brain to chant and think about something else so it's really hard to actually chant and write something down at the, at the same time so if you're if you're chanting it's really hard to write down that flash of inspiration, which shows how much it takes up your brain. So if you can't meditate, chant. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to just choose one more card. This is for everybody who has... Um, so I did a card about the lockdown. I did a card for Earth, Soul, Zen's son. Expect powerful change. You're welcome. And now I'm going to do a card for everybody who's asked a question and uh, who didn't get an answer today. Someone's saying any mantra will help scientifically to help your brain. Yeah, exactly. We're doing a chant to the goddess Kali because she is the destroyer of negativity. And there's so much fear. We're destroying the fear as well as the virus. All right, here we go. 
this is a card for everybody who asked a question and said they wanted a card. Um, it's not to do with the virus necessarily, it's to do with whatever you asked. Are you ready? Oh, another beautiful card. I'm so glad we're getting nice cards. Everybody needs nice cards right now. Have faith in your dreams. So there's a message. All right, I feel I've been a bit ranty again today. Sorry if I've been a bit ranty. Um, sometimes I just get ranty. It's one of those days, it's the waxing cycle, I may rant a bit. I'm going off now, I'm finishing writing the 2022 Moonology Diary. Oh, and if you want my books cheap, I put a link at the top of the Facebook. Um, you can get my books for up to 40% off, like for about three or four days, so don't miss out. Uh, Instagram, I'll give you the link because I can't put it on Instagram. It's moonmessages.com forward slash HHO5 2020, which means Hey House 05 for May 2020. Moonmessages.com forward slash HHO5 2020. And they've got tons and tons of books um, on sale for cheap, uh, including mine. All right, my beautifuls. Mwah! I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.